step down into darkness open my eyes let me see the beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you so here I
suffering I do drink of this work I do sing for all of my Savior both bruised and crushed so that God is love
Good morning. Uh, if you're visiting with us, it's great to have you here. This is not a normal service for us, but uh, I'm excited that we're taking this opportunity this morning just to spend some time singing and worshiping together. Uh, I've got a few things to say briefly, a short little message, and, and then we'll do some more singing together. Uh, there were some comments made this morning that apparently it's casual Friday, and uh, <laughs> You know, it's good to joke around and to have some fun. This is a day of joy, even though it's a day of great sorrow in ways, and we're going to talk about that. Today is what we call Good Friday, but how can we call it good? This is the day. It marks the day of the suffering of Jesus, his torture and execution, his abandonment and death. Jesus went from receiving days earlier shouts of Hosanna to receiving cries of crucify him. And I want to take some time today to look at this story, but first I want us to remember who Jesus is. We're talking about the Lord of the universe, the one who was and is and is to come. John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He's the beloved Son of God. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And as I read the following scripture, we have to remember who this man truly was and is. So Matthew 27, if you want to read along, that's where I will be. Matthew 27, verses 27 to 31. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters And they gathered the whole battalion before him. 
And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And they twisted together a crown of thorns and they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit on him and they took the reed and they struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and they put his own clothes on him and they led him away to crucify him. And we're getting partway into the story here. Prior to this, he's gone before Caesar. Caesar has washed his hands to absolve himself. Caesar thought, maybe if I beat him severely, then they won't call for his crucifixion. So he gets led away and he's scourged. And we'll talk about that. And then he gets led before this battalion. They take the one man in all the world who truly deserved to be honored. He deserved to be marched before the whole battalion and be crowned. Not with thorns, but with a crown of gold and with jewels. Instead, he's mocked, he's beaten, they dig thorns into his head. So deep would these thorns have been placed that they would have caused damage to blood vessels and nerves. It would have been incredibly painful. He was scourged with a multi-corded whip of stone, metal, and bone ripping pieces of flesh from his body. The ones in charge of this were so well practiced that they would stand on opposite sides of the body and use alternate hands just to make sure they really got the whole area well. These wounds were so deep that this Roman flagellation would actually cause injury to organs, even remove pieces of organs. They ridiculed his position of king. They spat on him. Jesus went beyond humility to absolute humiliation. Then in verses 32 to 44, we see even more humiliation. This weak and broken Jesus had to travel among the crowds as he made his way to Golgotha to be executed. They gave him wine mixed with an irritant. They gambled for his clothing. In mockery, they placed a sign over his head that said, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. They mocked his words about destroying the temple, and they said he should save himself. They mocked his words about saving others, and yet his inability to save himself. They declared that if he would just save himself, they would believe in him. They mocked his declarations of serving God and being the Son of God, and declared that God should save him. Beyond all the beatings, the mockery, and the ridicule, Jesus was crucified, which is one of the worst ways that humanity has ever created to kill each other. Jesus had his hands and his feet attached to the cross by piercing with large stakes. He was elevated off the ground. The position caused his body weight to cut off air supply to the lungs and cause suffocation. Every time he wanted to breathe, he had to push up on his nail-pierced feet and pull up on his pierced hands just long enough to catch a breath. This would be agonizing. With his back ripped open from scourging, his head bleeding, his hands and feet pierced, his shoulders raw from carrying the cross, his knees raw from falling and crawling to Golgotha, this was a man at the height of physical brokenness and pain. None of us here can even try to imagine this suffering. But beyond all the physical pain, Jesus endured more. He took upon himself the weight of the sins of the world. He became the sacrificial lamb who would die in our place. The one who would take upon himself the righteous wrath of Almighty God. And in so doing, in his humanity, he would be separated from the Father. He would feel the weight, the pain of rejection and separation. And not only from the Father, but even in ways from his own disciples leading up to this point. He would die alone, being mocked, broken, abandoned, in agony, and paying the penalty for your sin and mine. 
Verses 45 to 50 say, Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And at about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. This is what we remember today, our suffering Savior. We remember our sin and how our sin separated us from a holy God. How there was absolutely nothing that we could do to make ourselves right with Him. We were hopeless and helpless. We remember that the penalty for sin is death, not just physical death, but separation from God. An eternity spent not in heaven, but in hell. We express our thankfulness for Jesus standing in our place. We remember that he suffered all of this knowingly and willingly. It's incredible. This was the purpose for which he came to earth. We rejoice that he was the perfect lamb who could be slain for our sins. The only one who could Stand in our place. So let us remember the incredible humility and suffering of Jesus and the great love that he has for all who are his. And let us not forget the great price that was paid for our salvation. Let's pray. Lord, you are great and greatly to be praised. And today, We think about the incredible sacrifice of Christ. The willingness to come in humility to this earth to be born as a human baby. Essentially to be raised as a lamb to the slaughter. Such great love, Lord, we cannot understand. To willingly and knowingly go and endure so much suffering. to endure so much pain and agony just so that we could be spared, so that we could be called sons and daughters of the living God. What a precious gift, Lord. Let us each realize the weight of this today as we think about you. And let us rejoice even in sorrow Let us rejoice because you did come and die. And we know how this ends. And on Sunday we get to celebrate the resurrection. That you conquered death in the grave. So Lord, fill us with joyful anticipation for Sunday as well. As we continue to celebrate. Lord, thank you for this time. Let our time of singing be a sweet and fragrant offering to you. And as we sing these following songs, Lord... Let us remember, let us not forget who you are and what you've done. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
is a lamb that was slain for us. Son of God, amen.
to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the Are you washed in the blood? You know, Jesus' death, his suffering, his execution were for a purpose. Scripture tells us that we were bought with a price. God died so that we could be saved. Jesus died, he gave his life so that we could be saved. Do you know that salvation? What a great thing to be thankful for, and worship our King. Go in peace.
We're not going to have a fellowship time downstairs today, but feel free to fellowship in here. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shone upon you. May he be merciful to you. May you know the love of Christ.